My name is Dagfinn Bak. I'm today the president and founder of uh, Bak Technology, who has developed a music DNA product. But uh, I started working with the digital music industry already in the 90s. I was part of the first MP3 trials and also was one of, coordinating one of the first uh, online demand services across Europe. And then I was a consultant for Nokia before I started an aggregation company, which ended up in Buck Technology. Okay. So you've just finished a report for Music Tank in the UK. Maybe you could give us a little bit of the background to this report, uh, where the idea came from and what you wanted to focus on. Yeah, it came from an internal R&D project supported by the Norwegian Research Council where we wanted to uh, enhance the music DNA product uh, for the future and uh, also looking particularly on file sharing. And when we came across uh, more data about uh, the, the widespread of file sharing, we also came across uh, quite alarming data about the data traffic which made us start looking into that. So we added this as a component in the study. And uh, when we presented this in, in an eternal round table where a music tank was present, they invited us to do this together, uh, what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. it, it's a very timely report in that it, it captures media consumption at a pivotal point where we're going from this idea of ownership, of owning VHS tapes or DVDs or CDs, to beginning to access content online, be that through uh, music streaming services such as Spotify or movie services such as Netflix. So... With, with that in mind, what issues do you think have been raised in this report that, uh, that relate to this, this change in consumption? Yeah, what we knew in the very beginning was that uh, the world's data centers and data network already three years ago consumed 3 to 4 percent of the world's electric energy, uh, more than the aviation industry. And during the project, we have also got a report supporting that uh, actually it, uh, file sharing used to be the worst, but now it's uh, video. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's we are moving in a very uh, kind of looks like an uncontrolled development where it's increasing maybe faster than the technology can develop. Okay. One of the things people reading the report might be surprised to find out is that uh, streaming data uh, online and over mobile is potentially worse for the environment than actually buying physical products. People assume with factories manufacturing discs and lorries delivering products to record uh, shops or supermarkets, that that's where a heavy environmental cost is. But your report looks at the fact that for streaming services, the environmental cost is potentially bigger. Maybe you could explain a little bit about why that is. Yeah, I think uh, you have to separate the two kinds of streaming services. You have the one category where you have a repeating streaming every time you want to uh, listen or watch a movie. And, but then you also have on the good side uh, the solution that Spotify has developed very cleverly, where they're using a lot of caching. But uh, still, uh, a company like YouTube, which are growing so fast and also now increasing the, the minimum size or the maximum size of a video, uh, are already becoming a giant when it comes to data traffic. And of course, music is a big part of that when it comes to the new way of packaging digital music. Mm -hmm. So wh wh where are the environmental issues here? Maybe you could explain to the layperson why streaming uh, is causing environmental problems. Yeah, because uh, let's say if you watch a uh, watch, uh, photo on the, on the, on the screen, uh, it, on Facebook for instance, it's, it consumes energy to transport this from the server to, to you. If you are watching uh, videos or listening to data streaming high quality music, it's even worse. And our concern is that we really have to look at this, uh, whether we also can, the music industry could be on the front line to develop more uh, environmental friendly solution, which actually I would honor Spotify to, do, to have done already. Okay, so with 
with laptops and, and computers being kind of common in the living room, more and more people are buying connected devices, so tablet devices such as the iPad, but also smartphones and 3G and potentially 4G connectivity. How will this accelerate the, the problems that, that you outline in the report? Well, we rely on a study from uh, Cisco, who is the world-known uh, provider of routers for data network, and they uh, see that we soon read a threshold of uh, what they call the one yottabyte a year, which is a f an incredible amount of data per capita in the world. And, and if that turns out to be true, we are uh, more or less out of control. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and in the in the report, it's not just outlining what the problems are and where the problems lie. You also work through a number of uh, potential solutions. Maybe you could, without going into too much detail, maybe you could talk around what these are because uh, and and where the the entertainment industry could get involved. Well, uh, if you are thinking of trying to think illogical, it doesn't make sense to transport something to you every time you're going to consume it. Because in music you consume the same song many, many times. And like uh, film, you watch it maybe one or two times. Uh, so maybe we should see, is it possible to create a solution where static content could be stored and dynamic content could be, could be delivered online. But that also required mass storage, and this will happen. Uh, there's no doubt that there will soon come two terabyte memory cards, and in the end, we might end up in uh, memory cards that could be affordable and also could store all the music in the world. And if this could be combined with a subscription model, where uh, you eat and share and download, as much as you want for a monthly fee, it's worth looking at this as an alternative, a combination of preload or download once uh, uh, and only stream dynamic uh, content. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a final question, for, for the music industry, there obviously is a need to be greener, but in some of these solutions, it may cause a fundamental change in how content is licensed for use online. Is is this something that's being addressed in the report? No, we, I, actually, we, I think our report is uh, the tip of a potential big iceberg because it's a tiny part of the whole project. But I, I think we should encourage to get more resources to do really deep research in this because what we haven't addressed at all is the energy spent to producing cell phones, memory cards, etc., and also uh, transmitters for mobile networks, and this has to be done. I know that Greenpeace has started to look into it, but you know, this is a competence we doesn't have uh, in our uh, R&D project. With all of these uh, potential solutions, this may cause a change in how the music industry licenses for online. How, how is this addressed in the report? Well, we, we, we just uh, addressed some potential scenarios that, for instance, could we imagine a future license model where you uh, pay a monthly fee for uh, unlimited download, file sharing, to stimulate people to, to uh, download once or preload uh, static content and only stream dynamic content, uh, but it's, it's a big step for the music industry, so maybe they should start thinking about it, because bef before they, they know, someone has started to mass produce memory card with huge music catalogs, and selling it on the streets in countries where there is a long tradition for this kind of piracy. So I, I think the music industry has now to come in the front seat and take the steering wheel in their hands.